Hey guys, it's Bradley. Welcome back to my channel, Portly Gentleman. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up and fully assemble your Kumos kegerator. I'm also going to review it. I have the four tap model, but this video will apply to all of the newer Kumos models, whether it be one, two, three, or four taps. Full disclosure, more beer asked me if I would like to check out one of the new Kumoses. And obviously I said, yes, they haven't told me what to say. They have no say in this video. They're seeing it right when you are, I assure you. If you'd like to learn even more about home brewing and home brewing equipment, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and brew along with me. Research it, mash it, boil it, ferment it, drink it, analyze it, share it. Home brewing is good. Here's a look at what's in the box. Here are the faucets and the draft tower. Next up, this is the regulator that comes with it. It's a nice Kumos branded regulator. Here are the four casters that come with it. Two of them are locking. Definitely remember to put those in the front. Here's a shelf that's included, a drip tray, a CO2 holder, and a back rack guard. Here is the draft tower. This really is the star of the show. This is the four tap model, so it's got four holes and it is beautiful. Next up, a look at everything else included. Duro type fittings and hoses, handles for the faucets, a faucet wrench, screws to hold the draft tower onto the keg rider itself, as well as all the gas fittings you're gonna need. Now it's time to install the wheels. I recommend installing the wheels with the locks in the front. I also recommend when you first get your kegerator to go ahead and before you plug it in, you need to wait 24 hours. That's a good time to flip it on its side and put on the wheels. That way it's not stacked up here jankly like mine is on some random boxes, but everything honestly goes pretty well. This height was convenient for me for filming. So I like to put all the screws in hand tight first. That way I don't strip anything out. Sometimes they call me the stripper uh, I've been known to really booger up some threads and this just helps me and stops me from doing that. Once you get them all started hand tight or just handily put in there, then use your screw gun or your, your screwdriver and just tighten them down and then repeat for the other four. Remember the two locking ones should be in the front. Here we are on the other side, real, real fast. It's super, super simple process, but it took me a second. I realized the screws were already installed. Now it's starting to look like a kegerator. I think at this point, at least for me, I'm going to pull off the plastic film that protects the stainless steel front and get a good look at this thing. Oh man, it is definitely a nicely shiny piece of stainless steel with that Kumos logo in there. This really looks the business and it is just something pretty to look at. This was one of the most difficult stages for me was screwing down the draft tower. Remember the screws are on the inside because this guy takes four. I have a quick tip here. I used some painter's tape and my screwdriver and taped that screw on there. That way I could stick it down in the hole and not have to worry about finding the hole. I usually don't have trouble finding the hole, but you, you gotta have tape on this guy or a really good magnetic tip. So just stuff your arm in there. And honestly, it wasn't that bad. Once I got the first one, I got the feel of it and things went really quickly. Just get everything nice and tight. You shouldn't have any trouble. Again, it's just, it takes some fumbling around at first. So just be patient. Next up, it's time to thread in all of the tubing. The tubing comes in one length. I just cut mine into four equal pieces and wedged it down from the top. If you notice here, I actually forgot the insulation. I took it out so I could fit my arm. I've actually done this step twice. Here I am putting on the nut and then the plastic washer. Remember the flat part faces the nut. This is pushing in the door tight, super easy connection. It's, it's unbelievable. And then I connected that to the shank uh, for the faucet with the faucet attached makes it easier to hold on to and just pushed it on and worked it through really simple compared to the old one you had to use clamps this is me using the faucet wrench just tightening up the nut there on all of them make sure everything's good and tight you want to do the two lower ones first and the top ones uh, towards the end just for space concerns make sure everything is straight at this point is really critical once everything is good and tight you can go ahead and loosen up the faucets now just uh, turn the nut on the collar of that shank and then you can straighten them at this point to get them as straight as you want or however you want, think is most convenient for you and pouring your tasty beverage. The faucet wrench has a little kind of barb that sticks out that will fit the shank that way you can get that nice and tight. You kind of have to hold on to them. They kind of move a little bit, but it's really pretty painless. And once you've done it a few times, you really seem to get the hang of it. So here's me installing the drip tray and the, the back kind of uh, anti fall off guard. I'm not sure what this piece is called, but it goes in super easy. At this point, it's time to get on the inside and figure out all the tubing. 
Here's a look at the inside. Have all my lines in there. Right now I'm just tightening up the Duro type fittings on my ball lock connections. If you're using it for homebrew, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. Don't get these too tight. Ask me how I know. You can actually strip these out or damage the ball lock itself. So just get them good and tight. They will seal up just fine with that ferrule in there. Don't be a gorilla. Just take your time. You'll be drinking soon. Then it really is as easy as just pushing these on there. You'll kind of feel a little click when it's all the way seated. Make sure they're pushed all the way down. Also make sure your cuts are as straight as possible. That's gonna aid the whole process. There's all four of mine, fully assembled and ready to go on kegs. Next, it's time to trim up the font chiller hose. This is what keeps the font from getting warm. You always have a nice cold pour. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll give some tips on this, but basically just feed it up through there. It is kind of tight on space, and I was working around a camera and tripod, so for me, it was, it was cumbersome. For you, it may not be. But just stuff it up there, and it should be good to go. So there that is. I didn't leave any slack in mine. I want lots of room for keg. Next up, moving around to the back. The first thing for the gas setup, I'm gonna put on the gas bottle holder. This is a nice bracket, just slides right on and holds a gas bottle pretty firmly. I'm just using a five pounder. Now I'm screwing off one of the Coke bottle cap covers. They're on either side for running gas lines or an auxiliary line into the kegerator. I fed all my line through. There's plenty of extra gas line here. I actually got using a carbonation cap with a Durotite adapter. That way I can disconnect my bottle and regulator from the whole setup. I know some of you guys, this may be your first regulator and CO2 bottle. It's nice to be able to unhook and not have to worry about, you know, breaking connections that are airtight. This is just a super simple on and off with a gas post. Back inside, I'm gonna trim off a length of the gas tubing real quick right here, just to give me room to install the necessary T's and fittings to get all of my gas stuff set up. Again, this is set up for four kegs, so it's kind of tight on space, but it was really simple with the Durotite connections. Just push them in firmly, a nice straight cut like the liquid lines and you'll be good to go. The gas line actually has a larger inside diameter. You'll be able to tell it apart from the liquid lines. We're almost set up. I'm installing a 90 on mine. This didn't come with it, but it's a nice extra. I'll link everything below. Just installing the line for each individual ball lock. Again, tight on space here. I'm a large man, but just get them all in there and this is what it will look like. This is how I have it set up at least. Next, it's time to hook up the gas bottle with another Durotype, super easy connection. You wanna go ahead and definitely purge all the air out of your system, that's me purging right now. And like I mentioned earlier, this is the gas connection. So if you need to force carbonate, you could just unhook this from the kegerator and go right to your keg and not have to worry, this is ingenious. And if you only have one regulator, it's awesome. Here we are fully assembled, ready to put kegs in and start drinking beer first. I'm gonna show you guys the best way to adjust temperature. There's a fan button that turns the draft chiller fan off and on, also circulates inside. There's a button for Fahrenheit and Celsius. And to change the temperature, just hold either one of the buttons for a few seconds. It'll begin to flash. Then you can move the arrows up and down to select your dry temperature, and then just don't touch it for a few seconds and it will remember the temperature and you're good to go. So as far as the assembly process goes, you guys just watch it. The assembly was super easy. It honestly went together pretty quickly. Just remember to put the insulation back in if your arm is too fat to fit down the draft tower. Other than that, it's super straightforward. The kegerator itself, I think, represents a serious value considering you can get four kegs in it. As I have it set up currently, I have two six gallon torpedoes, one five gallon slimline, and one five gallon regular used kind of common Pepsi keg. I'm gonna say if you're gonna use two six gallons in this, you have to use the slimlines or the standard Pepsi kegs, you will not be able to fit three sixes or four sixes. They're just, the diameter is, is just too great, but it honestly fits them well. They're a little tall, so it makes it kind of confined on hooking everything up. It fits the five gallons, no problem at all. I really prefer the slimline torpedo kegs, to be honest, but that's just me or the sixes, because I mean, that's another gallon of beer and big boy got a drink. All right, guys, so I promised a little extra tip. This foam comes with your Kumas keg as part of packing to keep everything nice and safe. I crudely, very crudely, traced around and cut out a piece of foam that matches the top of this guy. And this will just fit right inside of the lid. And then you can just put it 
right on top of the keg writer. I found a little bit of condensation from that font chiller fan kind of showing up and this seems to have taken care of all the condensation. Whether it makes any difference at all, I couldn't tell you. It makes me feel good. So if you guys think it's a good idea, go ahead and try it and let me know what you think. Next up, I'd like to talk about energy usage. To figure out its usage, I use my kilovolt. You can get one of these on Amazon, link below. This device basically measures power going into the kegerator. I do have it hooked to an extension cord, so there may be some losses there. So these numbers aren't super precise, but I do think they are accurate and representative of what you could expect as far as power usage. With just the fan running, it's using about 3.2 watts, which is nothing. When the compressor kicks on, it jumps up to about 120, 125 watts that's with the fan running. It oftentimes, I found it settles down to right about 105 watts nominally, which is nearly no power. And that's when it's running uh, on the kilowatt here, I could see how many watts it's using per hour. Currently looking at it live, I have some B-roll here, but right now I'm sitting at two hours of use, 1.56 kilowatt hours used. So that's for two hours of running. So that's super effective. Again, if it was at a warmer temperature, I honestly think that it would be even more efficient if you had it set somewhere reasonably around 38 degrees, I think is a good reasonable spot. Mine is set at 30, which is having to work a little bit harder, but I have a feeling it could freeze the beer if you wanted it to. So there's what kind of power draw I'm seeing. These numbers are by no means perfectly scientific. I figured I'd throw it in just in case anyone was curious. If you wanna learn even more about the Kumos, I'm gonna link it below. I'll have links to all of the various extra pieces, the carb caps and stuff I've used and various connectors to get it to my configuration. You can check those out on morebeer.com. That is probably one of the best places to get this. Morebeer will get it to you in a few days. It only took them about three or four days to get it to my front door which is really awesome. As far as the build, the front is a nice stainless steel door. It's extremely well insulated. It doesn't dissipate a ton of heat through the sides. It definitely holds temperature well. As I have it right now, I have the temperature down extremely low. I was trying to encourage some flocculation. I think it would be even more efficient if you had it somewhere around 38, a reasonable temperature, whereas I have it set at 30, but it's holding that temperature no problem. And ambient right here in the brewery is about 71 degrees and it's having no issue at all. I think this represents a significant value personally for what you get. It has everything except for a CO2 bottle and the ball locks. Other than that, it comes with everything else you need to get going and start serving your beer. Get away from bottles, it's a pain in the ass. You can definitely serve just in cans, but Kegs really are the best way in my opinion. It's just so convenient. You only have to clean one vessel and clean your lines occasionally. You could also build a keyser conversely. Weighing the pros and cons is gonna be for you, whether it makes sense to build a keyser or to buy a keg grater. If you decide to buy one of these, I don't think you'll have any trouble with it. I've had mine running for about a month and a half. It seems to stay extremely cold. It's pretty quiet and everything works as anticipated. So honestly, I really like this product. I think it's gonna be long lived and I think it will serve you well. All right, so all that's left is to have a beer and beer. I made pretty decent beer. This is a Hefeweizen. Came out really nice. It's one of them uh, in one of my Portland gentleman glasses that I am super thrilled with. Remember guys, this has been Bradley. Thank you so much for watching. Home brewing is good and I'll see you real, real soon. Oh, a drum change. Oh, this is a little shirt for a big boy. Man, I thought this shirt was bigger. Ooh. Yeah, I've definitely put on some weight. Definitely. Oh, the pandemic. It's been rough on me. Holy shit. Look at this shirt. Huh. Whatever. I love you, Brian. I wear your shirt even though we need bigger sizes for bigger guys. Oh. This is just confining. All right.